What's up, everyone? Welcome to today's episode of DMGH Podcast. Today, we will be discussing, should you go to law school? Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast, or DMGH Podcast. A place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host Chris. What's up guys? It's Chris from DMGH podcast. Today we have with us Pratik Parikh. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Chris. So, why don't we get started and you tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. So, I actually went to law school straight from undergrad. I went to the University of Connecticut, graduated in political science and thought, you know, I wanted to go to law school and applied. I applied to I can't even tell you how many schools. I'd probably say somewhere up in the 20s. And ultimately decided the school that I went to. And now we're graduating in May, headed to a firm in the city, or in New York, actually, to be more specific, um, or less specific. And uh, it's been a great path. You know, you learned a lot in law school. It's one of those things where the decision you make, make in terms of what school you go to, if you should go to law school or not, can ultimately impact your future. And it could be economic. It could be what your career path is going to be. But it's definitely an important question to ask. Did you always know that you wanted to go to law school? I did. I mean, ever since a young age, I worked with my parents at businesses, and I realized very quickly that there's a need for attorneys in especially my community of people trying to grow small businesses. And being Indian, there's not that many attorneys out there. And so I knew I wanted to become an attorney and help my community whenever way I could. And so I knew law school was one way of doing it. What did you major in college? I majored in political science, so the generic attorney thing to do. <laughs> Nothing unique, you know, but... It was just one of those paths, like you read online, everyone tells you, you know, political science is the most common major for lawyers. So I knew that was something I could just do. But I will tell anyone that's listening, like, you don't have to major in political science. You can do whatever. I think we have a friend that graduated a, in a dance major, I think. Yeah. So people can do anything under the moon they want to do. But I chose to do political science. And did you ask yourself the question of, should I go to law school? I did. I think there's a lot of information out there. And sometimes you kind of get clattered and all. One reason a lot of people go to law school and then was first one of my choices was the money aspect of it all right like every movie you've seen be it legally blonde paper mm-hmm. chase or you watch suits whatever it is yeah it's i'm gonna be rich yeah and you lo- realize very quickly like fortunately for myself like i'm headed to a firm in new york which is great but at the same time that six-figure market is not re- realistic i mean i think reports have said i think 17 percent of all graduates are only making six figures huh. which means 80 percent aren't so the problem is if you're going to law school thinking i'm gonna be making a lot of money it's time to reconsider. Like that's not the way about going about it for law school. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely since the market is more saturated now than it used to be too. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's just this false impression a lot of people have is like, I'm going to be living this lavish lifestyle. And that's not the truth. I mean, great. It'd be nice, really nice to be in that market range. But I think they were saying now, which is the national, I think, law placement organization, mm-hmm. they were saying majority of students will fall between that 45 to 65,000 range. And then the rest, there's like an awkward range in between. And then the other half is going to fall at that huge 160, 180 market. Mm-hmm. But assuming you think you're making six figures is the reason why you're going to law school, probably not the best thing in there. So what do you think is one question a person should ask themselves before going to law school? It's really why you want to go to law school. Like, what do you want to get out of it? What do you plan to achieve? Or what, what's your reasoning, right? Like everyone says you should have an elevator pitch ready. Like they train us when you do interviews for law school or for law place for jobs. It's why law school. And if your reason is I want to make money or I just want to, you know, I need more time to, before I become an adult or, you know, other whatever non-logical reasons there are, it might be time to reconsider. You know, if you want to make a difference, if you're trying to solve a problem, try to better it for yourself, it may, may make sense. But it's a huge investment. Depending on what school you go to, the investment to go to law school could be as high as $300,000. That's a mm-hmm. lot of money to put in for three years of trying to figure out life. So I guess ha- like have a why is right. the most important thing. For me, my why evolved throughout college and even law school it, um i went through my family went through some immigration um issues that we had and i saw attorneys as kind of superheroes because right. i was so young and i was just looking up to these attorneys that were essentially saving saving us and so that was my why initially but my why evolved because as i saw what having economic um power could really do of course I, was, I really was interested in the law for also the money as well but not necessarily because of the money but what the money could bring my family and i guess you know friends right. and stuff 
and also helps the fact that you know you we were both fortunate enough to get jobs in that kind of range right yeah. if we hadn't then you'd be the fact well do you really have a reason why exactly and having that conversation of saying okay well if i don't get this money am i still happy doing this job yeah for a lot of people it's like i'm doing solely for the money that's not the right place to be but money's obviously a power you know a factor for everything you do yeah um but if you have other reasons i think it's well worth it even on that on that line or train of thought i think it's also a bad a bad thing to do when you think that being an attorney gives you some sort of superpower. I feel like a lot of movies and shows really hail attorneys as yeah. this dramatic daily fight against, you know, what's wrong. But in a lot of ways, it's more mundane than that most of the times. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, you know, since I, I, you know, you watch SVU, you think this person's solving all the problems in the world. Yeah. Which, you know, which would be ideal, which would be great if we could all do that. But yeah. the reality is someone's got to represent the other side. There's going to be other issues coming up. And not every day as an attorney is that exciting, to be honest. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're going to be sitting behind a desk just looking through pages and pages of documents. So if you're thinking you're going to be that all-star in the courthouse, you know, jumping at people and trying to figure it out, that's not what it is either. Yeah. So there's this balance of knowing what the laws actually, or law school and what the laws really going to lead to. Which I feel most people don't don't know. In no, terms it's, of what it's, it's because you watch right? Legally Blonde or you watch for the paper chase and you think, you know, your first year you're going to defend someone in court. Like, it's just not going to yeah, happen. Exactly. Uh, so I guess, so have your why is is very important. Do you think there's anything else that you should ask yourself? I mean, are you ready for the debt? I mean, that's the thing. It's it's a lot of money. I mean, if you're fortunate enough to go to a school with a scholarship, great, good for you, congratulations. But if you don't and you're ready, are you ready to spend that kind of money? Because knowing that the job prospect might not lead to six figures, might lead to thirty or forty thousand, then you have two hundred thousand dollars in debt. Are you prepared for that? Yeah. And having that ability to say, okay, I'm ready for what's going to come down the path line or whatever it may be, then you know it's a good choice to be. But if you're going to see that the debt amount, the mortgage coming in, the payments you have to make. Yeah. Be ready for it. Which also brings up the subject of scholarships. Yeah. If, if you're applying to law school, apply, you know, um, do well in college, try your hardest, clubs, extracurriculars, resumes, so that when you apply to law school, maybe you'll get a scholarship and it'll make your decision a lot easier if you're not paying for law school at all. Yeah. I mean, if you can kill the LSATs, that helps the cause. I mean, yeah. look, any school that tells you to do the holistic approach, probably do. But reality is scholarships come from LSATs and GPAs. Oh, yeah. And so if you have the numbers, hopefully you get it. Yeah. But the other thing to consider, and I know I'm sure you'll talk about this at another point, is the ranking list, right? A lot of these students think, I have to go to a T14. Yeah. And for those that don't know what T14 is, it's the top 14 law schools. And the problem there becomes is, well, now that you left the T14 or top 14 schools, where do you go and what do you do? Mm-hmm. And the challenge is, well, is it worth you know going to that 20th or 21st or 30th school where it's going to charge you $70,000 to go a semester or a year? Or would you rather go to a smaller school where the rent or the tuition is going to be 20000 Yeah. It's kind of that balance that you have to figure out for yourself. Yeah. And the thing I've seen that a lot over the past three years of law school, I've seen kids, I've interned with kids that are going to Harvard or Yale, they're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Oh, yeah. Yet we're in the same exact internship and um, we're going to very similar law firms after graduation, yet they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars while I'm graduating with almost no debt in terms of law school. Oh, yeah. But also be aware, like, Chris's scenario is unique. It's not common. Right. It's not common to, to go to a non-T14 and go to a very prestigious right. law firm. So for those listening, co- commonly people that go to smaller schools, GPA and your network will determine where you end up going. Yeah. And we can both attest to it. Going to firms either in New York or in DC or any of these hot markets where you're going to a prestigious firm, the challenge becomes, well, I need the grades and I need to show them why I'm better than anyone in the T14 range. I definitely agree. Definitely and agree. that's something you have to be prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely don't go to law school just because you want to go to a law school. If you don't get into a law school that is reasonably ranked uh, or one that you could at least work with, just don't go. Yeah. I mean, look, anyone that tells you you have to go to T14 and not go to law school is not going to be honest with you, right? Because the problem is not everyone can go to a T14. Yeah. And not everyone necessarily needs to. I mean, if you want to go into a certain law where you don't have to be or go to a T14, like if you want to open up your own law firm, you don't need to go to T14. Actually, you probably shouldn't, to be honest. In in some aspects, you shouldn't. You know, why graduate with 400 grand in debt when you're about to start your own law firm and go into further debt starting your own law firm? That's for sure. I mean, look, you got to know your priorities. This this all goes back to why and what your goals are, right? If it's a solo practice, I mean, for nonprofit, right, the the salary isn't that high for you to be like, all right, I'm going to go take all this debt on. Maybe you go to a smaller school. Big law, yeah, the name makes a huge difference. I mean, I've noticed from my experience of interviewing, you know, it's typically dominated by T14 schools. And so a lot of the questions we'll get, well, why should we take someone from a lower ranked school? Because mm-hmm. they're not used to it. That's not the, the environment in that, cult, in that firm. So they're looking for the top scholars or someone that can personality match, whatever it is. Yeah. I've gotten those questions of, of before. And and, uh, oh, yeah. and we've talked about that, how I would enter in an interview. And the first question they would ask would be, we just interviewed a kid from Harvard. Why should we accept a kid from your school? 
Yeah. And how do you, uh, I don't even recall how I reacted. I remember it, my mind just went blank and my yeah. eyes got all fuzzy. And I was like, am I be <laughs> actually being asked this question? It's a real question. It's it's scary because like, you don't have the right answer, right? Like they tell you in interviews, like never undercut anybody else. But at the same time, like, what are you supposed to say to that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't go to Harvard. Like, I have yeah. no other answer to that. Like, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you, work hard, but that's what everyone else is going to tell you too. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is that. Yeah, so that's a, a tough one. So I would definitely say look at school rankings, like you said. Really yeah, look important. at school rankings. Look at, you know, if you're ready to take on the debt, look at why you want to go to law school. I think it's a lot of self-evaluation before you can commit yourself to a rigorous three years. It's not going to be like an undergrad program where you walk in, it's, you know, you know, first week is syllabus week and you're kind of jumping around and having fun and yeah. exams here and there, nothing too serious. That's not what it is. Yeah. Like, are you ready for the dedication, the time, the effort, the debt, whatever it is that comes down your path line, then consider law school. I think you also need to evaluate what you're willing to give up yeah, when you I mean, to law school. The, the opportunity cost, when we talked about this, it's when you're going to law school for three years, you're going to be giving up a lot in the way. Yeah. It, some of it could be as serious as mental health. Some of it could be time with your family. Some mm-hmm. of it could be whatever. You know, whatever's important to you at times will get sacrificed. Yeah. My first year, um, I only spent 15 or 20 minutes, something along the line, along that line. It was less than an hour with my, at the time, girlfriend um, during our anniversary. I mean, on the yeah, anniversary yeah, day, I was exactly. giving her like 30 minutes of my time, maybe a little more. I don't remember. Yeah, people don't understand that. It's not one of those things where you can be like, oh, yeah, it's Thanksgiving break. I'm going to go away for a month or a week or whatever and like not do anything. That's not how this works. Yeah. You know, this is a dedication. It's a full time job and more. Yeah. You know, you don't get to go home and just relax. It's case briefing and reading and prepping and outlining, whatever it is. Yeah. It's a it's dedication. And if you're not ready or you can't do it, another reason, you know, understand that law school is a lot of work and maybe it's better for you to go later later in life. You know, it might not be the time for you to go now. Yeah. And I think it's also important to kind of talk about how you also need to evaluate where you want to go with your law career. If you don't want to do something that's super competitive, then maybe it will be easier for you. It's not, I've said, it's not hard to graduate law school. It's right. hard to do well in law school. Of course. So if your goal is to open up your own law firm or go into a practice area that um, isn't that competitive, or let's say your parents are attorneys and you just want to uh, get a JD for you to enter your parents' firm, then you don't really necessarily need to go in there and give it your, your all, even though, I mean, everyone should really give everything their all, but not oh, yeah. everyone has to. But law school's not designed that way, right? Like, not everyone's going to walk in there and get an A. Yeah. And a lot of people have this false impression, like, oh, I killed undergrad. I'm going to go in there and destroy law school. Oh, my gosh. No. (laughs) (laughs) It really doesn't work that way. I mean, unfortunately, you know, people that come from top schools from undergrad come to law school and get a reality check at the door. And that's something you got to be prepared for. But again, like, if grades aren't something you need, if your parents are going to hire you out of law school, like, great, fantastic. Don't worry about the debt or don't worry about the school, whatever it is. But for those of you that are shooting for big law, like, your grades are something that probably the biggest thing that's going to open that door for you. Without those grades, like you're in a, in a shot, in a, you know, reality check. You're not going to get those jobs. You're not going to get those offers, and you know, be be prepared for it. That's all I can say. That's definitely true. And what else does a person need to contemplate before before applying? Go, I mean, it's again, if you have other priorities in time, I would say if you know some people have a lot of family obligations, like understand what you have going on for you, right? If you have family obligations, if you have you have to have to keep your job or whatever it may be, there's a lot to take on. I mean, you can go part time, but it's a time dedication thing. So know yourself and know how much time you can dedicate to law school. And if you're not, you can't do it at that time. Like I said, you know, push it back a little bit or reevaluate, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a lot of time when it comes to law school, especially if you want to do well. I mean, if you're going to just get the JD, fine, so be it. But if you're trying to do well, it's a time thing. Know yourself, know how much time you're going to need and go from there. Yeah. What's that saying? Um, if uh, like, what do you call a person who graduated a medical school last in their class a doctor yeah but it, that does not apply to, to no, law school you're unemployed <laughs> that's yeah what, that's yeah. what it's gonna if be you graduate and you're unemployed and you wasted three years pretty much yeah and that's the unfortunate reality i mean i was looking at i think it was a 2016 graduating class results and i think it's like three thousand it's 32 i think thirty two thousand attorneys graduated or thirty seven thousand, and like two or three thousand of them aren't unemployed and that's the reality like not everyone's wow. getting a job yeah so also probably if you want to go to law school but don't know if you're cut out for the lifestyle, work at a law firm as a secretary or as an Fairly intern well, yeah. and see what the attorneys do and if you could uh, imagine yourself doing that. Or even just go talk to an attorney. That's and true. It, you know, like it's easy to go find someone that's either currently in law school or about to graduate or recently graduated. Talk to me like, you know, what was life school, law school like? What can I expect? What should I be doing? And you'll get the reality. You know, I've, I talk to my mentees all the time. They're... Their biggest thing is like, I wish someone would tell me like what law school is really going to be like rather than give me like the, the sugar coated version of it all. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I, I entered law school with a pretty accurate um, idea of what it would be like. But even then, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever be ready for it. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like everyone thinks they're going to be the exception to the rule, right? Like, yeah. 
every attorney I've spoke to before coming to law school is like, oh yeah, it's rough, but it's like everyone manages it. You don't realize until you step into law school and take your first exams, your first semester, where it's like, this is really, really bad. Like, this is rough. And that's when you start realizing, like, okay, I should have took the advice more seriously. Like, I'm not going to be the exception. Like, I'm not going to coast through. I'm not going to get straight A's. Like, that's not the reality. And you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. Like, you're going to be a diamond among diamonds. You're not the diamond against the rock. You're the diamond among diamonds. So that's the yeah. challenge. Yeah. It's like being a diamond amongst pearls yeah. at the same time, yeah. you know? Um, how about we go into some benefits or some positives about law school and some negatives about law school? So, I mean, definitely positives wise, it's a rewarding career. You know, you can help a lot of people. I mean, again, depending on what you want to do, you can help people, help organizations, help, you know, if you want to go into the, the national circuit, you can help countries, help people, help organizations, corporations, you can help a lot of people. It's a great tool to have. So without that tool, you're not going to court, you're not helping people. You can't, you, you're unique. I guess the best way to put it is you have a unique service that you can offer that no no one else can. Mm-hmm. It also offers other jobs that you might not have, right? You can, with a JD, you might have more of a, an ability to become a, what do they call those people at work that don't have a JD at like JP Morgan Chase and stuff like that? Um, Compliance officers. Yes. There you go. So those, you know, those kind of jobs definitely get more rewarding as you get up the ladder of your educational level. So definitely those, I would say, are some of the perks of going to law school, you know, be it the career path you take. I mean, salary is definitely one of them if you get, you're fortunate enough to get one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you get to help people as much as you can. Yeah, it's true. One negative is definitely your mental health and physical health, possibly. Yeah. Like I'm the type of person where if I'm stressed, I overeat. And uh, I've heard that's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine the opposite. But yeah, I, I get it. And um, before law school, I had certain habits. I used to like lift weights a lot. I used to go to the movies and really focus on my mental health in a lot of ways and how to improve my mind and and also a very large extent um, like spirituality. But once you get into law school, you're so busy that almost everything takes a backseat. Yeah, I mean, look, like we said before, it's. Law school is one of those things where you're dedicating so much time to it because it's if you're not in class, you're outlining. If you're not outlining, you're reading for next class, whatever it is. You're doing something all the time. And so eventually the rest of your life kind of takes a back seat. I tell my mentees all the time, don't forget the outside world keeps moving on while yeah. you're in law school. It's true. And that's just the reality. Like, <laughs> you could sit here and think like, yeah, you know, everything's been holding out. Yeah. You're going to start eating. You're going to start gaining weight. You're going to stop going to the yeah. gym. It's all that's going to happen. Yeah. And Trump became president during what was our yeah. tool. Like, yeah. I was like, where did I go? Did I go into a different dimension? And <laughs> like, what happened to yeah. reality? It happens all the time. Like, for me, like, I didn't really realize that till like, my sister was like, oh, by the way, I got my license. And I was like, wait, when did that happen? Yeah. And that's when I was like, wow, like, the world really does move on. And while well, we're stuck in this little bubble of like the yeah. law. Yeah. And that's something you have to remember. But, you know, time management is one of those skills that yeah. you're going to learn and hopefully develop in law school. But it's tough. And it's funny, too, because now that our time in law school is ending, I have more free time now. And as I kind of watch the real world a lot more now, yeah. it feels like I was in like an ice in the ice chamber and I came out and I was like, <laughs> what year is it? Yeah, like what? a cave in walking out. You're like, oh, my God, yeah. where am I? Yeah. Like, what is it? Like, um, Kim Kardashian's sister is, is very close to becoming a billionaire. What Jeez. is it? The uh, Kylie Jenner? I Maybe. Think. I don't know. She's like really close to becoming a billionaire. I was like, what the heck? When like, did that happen? <laughs> when did that happen? Like, yeah. when was she even a millionaire? Like, yeah. I knew her family was rich, but what? That's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, man. The world moves on and like law school definitely like puts you behind a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just because it takes up so much of your time, unfortunately. Yeah. Or fortunately, yeah. every way you want to look at it. And the thing about a JD, there's, there's, there's exceptions to this, but I feel like if you get a JD, you will more likely than not be qualified for like almost any job in terms of um, just like straight up qualifications. Yeah, because because sure. you have a degree that that kind of sets your, yourself apart. Obviously, there's exceptions. If you need an engineering degree, you're not going to get an engineering right, job just because yeah. of JD. Um, but it does give you an advantage in terms of the job market. Uh, yeah, if like you're a compliance for officer, right? Like if, exactly. you're compli- if you're competing for a job, like you being able to have a JD that requires me to look at statutes, like I can definitely do that as an attorney. Yeah, which gives you the edge. You know, like the JD definitely helps you open up a little couple more doors. But again, there's still other doors. Like you're not gonna become a doctor all of a sudden. Like it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it definitely opens doors. Yeah. And like we we said before, I think the potential high income is really useful, especially if you're thinking about investing. Of course, you can invest with any amount of money. You can start yeah. somewhere. But obviously, having a higher income when you start out investing definitely propels you faster towards financial freedom. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, you know, going into law school that was the perk, right? Like anyone that wants to go to higher education, you know, the money's a factor. Yeah. Be it doctors or lawyers or whoever else. The money is a huge factor. And like I said, I, I think it's a good thing to consider, but that can't be the sole reason you Exactly. Go to yeah. Because it, it could easily go the other way. Like, I'm not from a T14 school. Yeah, I'm going to a very large law firm. Yeah. And of course, as we both know, I'm very blessed to have that. But it could it could have easily went the other way. It's also the hard work and dedication you gave to it, right? And yeah. It's, 
it happens all the time, man. Like people say, like, I'm gonna kill it, and then come first semester, they get a C on their transcript for the first time ever. Yeah. And they're like, well, that goes there goes that. Like, I'm not saying you can't come back from it, but a lot of the times like, yeah. well, now I gotta say, like, how do I come back from that? It's a punch in the gut and you yeah. gotta know how to come back from that. No. And a lot of times it's very difficult. Oh yeah, that's for sure. But def- uh, law school is filled with kids that pretty much were exceptional in college or did great without trying on those two. No. And, and you get into law school and you realize that you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. No. I mean, it's, it, like I said, you got to check your ego at the door. Yeah. Second, you walk into law school, you can't think you're the smartest kid. And like, I mean, come on. I thought that when I walked through the door, I was like, <laughs> right, I did really well in undergrad. Like, how bad can this really be? Yeah. And then you walk into your first class, your first large time, and you're like, dang, all right, maybe I'm not yeah. the br- brightest bulb here, but hey, that's yeah. just part of the deal. I think that's a benefit I had from going into law school kind of blissfully ignorant where i watched enough movies to know law school is going to be really hard and i had enough low confidence <laughs> that i didn't okay. think i was better than people yeah. and then um uh, i also had family that kind of told me what law is like okay. and met with attorneys and every attorney i met told me to not go to law school it's horrible yeah. the field of law is is it can be horrible if it's not for you and i was pretty much put in this like really fearful <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> i mean I didn't even have that. So I went to law school thinking like I'm going to be the first in my family. I didn't know any other Indian lawyers. So I was like, all right, I'm going to figure it out as I go. Yeah. But I was like, I did well. Like, how bad could this really be? Yeah. Reality check. Yeah. Even me, like even, yeah. even me going in being yeah. uh, kind of conservative in that way, it still blew me out of the water. Oh, yeah. I, I was not expecting to stay up so many nights and everything. I mean, the biggest ones like when you get your first large assignment back, like we all think we're decent writers. Oh my like, gosh. You, didn't get into, you didn't get into law school without being a decent for writer. For those that um, large is, is is basically the legal writing course in each law school, it'll be have a different name, but essentially it's just a class where you focus on your writing. Yeah, research and writing. Yeah. And you know, when you write your first paper, it's like the second or third week of law school and you get your feedback and you're like, yeah. wait, I should be an A writer in undergrad. I got a C on this assignment. Yeah, yeah. That's when you get the reality. Trailer. I mean, even more so, Jeez. like we're all used to these A's. Even getting like a B plus is like a shot in the heart you're like, because oh, no. you were like a flat <laughs> A. Like your professor would 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 just brag about you to the class, <laughs> and then you go to law school, and it's like, yeah, this is one of the worst papers <laughs> I've ever read. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, it's that's what it is. Check your check your ego at the door. Like this is not going to be a joke. Yeah. It's also not a place necessarily to make friends. And I, I don't say that in, ter- in um, to try to say to not make friends. Like you and me are best friends oh, yeah. and, and this group from law school. But you need to decide what your focus is going to be. Yeah, I won't say there's no time for social life in law school, right? There is. It's a networking event, mm-hmm. right? You network people. That's how you build your network. Yeah. But at the same time, there's not time to go around and fool around and waste your time and energy, right? Yeah. It's building that friendships that you know are going to push you to be better. Yeah. And I think that's where I think for us, at least we worked well together was – if one of us was studying, we we're making sure the other person was. We were pushing each other to challenge each other in any ways. And when you get complacent in a group study, and that's what happens a lot with students, is they sit in a group of four and they start chit-chatting or they get complacent in the level of work. And the problem becomes that it affects everybody in the group. So I tell people all the time, if you're going to get a study group, find someone that's going to challenge you. If it's if you get torts, find a person that doesn't understand torts. Like Get someone that's going to challenge you continuously. That's how you grow. And you've been friendships that way too. Yeah. And we're proof of, of how that works. I remember yeah. R1L, you were the boss at Torts. I was the boss at Contracts. Yeah. And when it came to test day, it was it reversed to where the, your <laughs> best grade was Contracts yeah. and my best grade was Torts. And yeah. that definitely stemmed from that friendship. Of course. I mean, like I said, it's doable. It's not like it's impossible, but at the same time, it's it's tough. It's an in, look, look, people get this impression law schools is a cutthroat competitive environment. And I'm sure some schools are. Like for us, our school wasn't so much like that. But at the same time, you do know that the person you're sitting next to could be the person stealing your grade. But when yeah. you're building friendships, it's not about that. It's about having that conversation. Be like, hey, you're my best friend or you're my friend. Like, I want you to do well, too. And I feel like it's ingraining that in your head. Like, yeah, okay, I'm upset. Like, okay, oh, my God, I didn't get the A. But accepting it, too. Be like, you know, someone that deserves it got it, too. That's a, honestly one of the worst parts about 1L that I was not used to in college is that you're literally – you're put against yeah. your, your your fellow – students yeah. and, and colleagues and stuff and I, I wasn't ready for that i remember people were asking other people for outlines and you were kind of here into people's conversations or at least i would no yeah. and you would hear like oh yeah like i'll just give them a different one and not the one i'm using and it's like it's stuff where it's really nasty and you don't really see that in, in undergrad because professors could give out the as many as they, they want yeah and fortunately law school has this curve system right? i think it's yeah. a universal thing i think it's just our school but all law schools curve and yeah. the curve the way the curve works is if there's 100 kids in your class, and at our school, it's a 3% rule. So only 3% of kids can get an A. That means out of 100 kids, only three kids are getting an A. So like, yeah, you're a little you're a little antsy about it. And so you think about like, should I give them my outline? But the reality is probably you'd have one, but should I give them one? Like, should we work together? Should I help them out with this? It's always those thoughts in the back of your head saying like, if I help them in any way, I'm undercutting my aspect of getting an A. Yeah. But for me, it was always about learning. Like it's if you collaborate and you work well together, like you'll have the opportunity to build from there. 
yeah i, I was not ready for for that aspect oh, of no. it yeah <laughs> it, it, it's a whole new environment it's nothing like you see in the movies it's nothing like you're seeing undergrad it's it's a reality check for everybody it's the workload it's the exams it's the professors like professors here are not meant to be like oh, i'm going to give you the exact rule like that's not how law school works mm-hmm. it's understanding the material grasping it and learning sometimes on your own yeah and creativity yeah i feel like people don't talk about how much you need creativity especially yeah. in law school i mean look the final exam is a fact pattern right like we know it's sometimes you get five or ten pages it's you get looking at these facts and be like, what's the most creative what solutions can i give that are obviously normal to give but is there a creative solution i can get and that's how yeah. you get those bonus points i give you from the the a minus to the a or the b exactly. plus to the a minus definitely and i think one skill that people get in law school that's overlooked is team building. I feel like people create study groups and essentially if you look at that, that's really a person creating a team Yeah, and that can be applicable in any capacity. If you're open up, if you're starting your own small business, that's a great ability to have is to pick out people that you know will advance your goal. And I feel like law school gives you that. Yeah. It's it's trying to avoid that complacency, right? Like you can't be in a group or team building where you guys are cutting each other down or you're not in an environment that's going to help you grow. You got to find that environment that's going to help you build your, you know, in that case, your academic career. Mm -hmm. If it's your business, you know your business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing you'll learn throughout law school. Do you feel like you have to be good at public speaking or you have to want to talk in front of a judge to go to law school? Not necessarily. I mean, I remember Lars, for us, legal research writing second semester required us to go in front of people. And I told uh, our professor, I was like, listen, I'm never doing this in my life. Like, do I really have to do this? Because I, I, look, I don't mind public speaking, but like, knowing this is my career like i was like oh my god this is gonna be horrible like i'm gonna screw this up and the second i walked away from that presentation i was like i'm out i was like i'm never doing this again <laughs> i remember the professor died laughing she's like really and i was like never again look you don't have to do it like i'm gonna be signed behind a desk doing transactional work so you can do that you don't have to go in front of a judge yeah um but which is a big i feel like misconception i yeah. feel like a lot of kids in college don't understand what being a lawyer really is and a lot of it isn't going in front of a judge or, or yeah. debating with another attorney. A lot of it is transactional work where it's more of a team effort where both sides are just trying to get the best um, the best outcome for the client. A lot of times it's not necessarily a uh, aggressive or, um, um, I guess... Uh, it's not really trials, to be honest. Yeah. If you really think about it, like, a lot of litigation doesn't go to court. All gets then settled. So you're sitting behind closed doors and talking to the opposing party. So like it's really not going in front of a judge all the time. And so that's definitely a false perception. But think about it. Like you look at SVU, you look at all these shows, like all these shows, these attorneys, powerhouse attorneys go in front of these judges and yelling and screaming, do discovery and whatever they're doing. But most of the time, like, yeah, you might get to discovery, but then they'll want to settle or you won't be in litigation. You'll be doing a transactional issue that's going to get settled or you working to draft a contract. Like you never have to publicly speak there. It's just having, you have to have the basic communication skills to talk to your clients and know how to deal with that or your opposing counsel, but I don't think you have to be comfortable speaking in front of a judge. Mm-hmm. But if you want to be a trial attorney and you want to go to court, yeah, probably should be comfortable speaking yeah. in front of people. Yeah, because the ultimate goal in a, lot of, in a lot of trials is to settle beforehand. 100%. But if you're going into the into that career hoping you never go in front of the judge yeah. and you end up getting in front of the judge, it won't be... You better be ready. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Um, any other negatives you think people should know about? I mean, the time commitment is one of them, right? I mean, I know it's one of those things where you think... as it's for the, I guess I want to say for the younger crowd, right? Like for like I'm like I'm 24. Like you want to have a social life and you want to go out and date and things like that. Law school does cut away from that. Yeah. And I think it takes time away from family time or whatever it is. And we talked about this a little bit, right? Already. And it's just being prepared to know that law school is something you have to prioritize. And a lot of times, your other things are taking backseat. And so mm-hmm. that's one negative. But at the same time, it could be rewarding once all this is done. Yeah. I mean, it gets better as as law school. That's for sure. But I think yeah. we also figured out the hack to like get to yeah. law school, like schedule wise, yeah. like. We're taking a super light load this semester. Like yeah. we're we're in a clinic, uh, and that's taking most of our time. Other than that, it's like one class or two. Yeah. And in my one L, I was really busy. Yeah. Didn't have time for anything at all. I think the whole year I took like three days off. If that, full yeah. days, if that. Uh, two L, I was still pretty busy. We interned a lot. Yeah, we interned a lot. Um, so we're busy with that. It was more busy because of internships and the actual yeah, classes. Interning clinic and all that yeah. stuff. But at the same time, I, I did well and I also got married. I yeah. went on the honeymoon that semester too during spring break. Um, and my third 3L so far is is even, is even a lot more relaxed than before. So it's definitely not – it's not three years of straight sprinting. You just got to play it um, smart. I think there's a saying, right? Like, I think it's like one all they scare you to death, two all they work you to death, and three all they bore you to death. That's, Definitely. I, I, I can see it. Like I, now yeah. sitting here as a three all, I was like, I can see it now. I can totally see that. Uh, but yeah, Pratik, that was great. Thanks for being on the show. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you back, man. Can't wait. All right. 
You guys, thanks for listening as always. I hope this helped at least one of you. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, uh, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Google Play Podcasts. You can find us also on Instagram and pretty much every major platform. As always, it's Chris from DMGH Podcast. I'll talk to you guys soon. Morning dew, familiar ache Being awake, being almost me I breathe sweet war in the air Vague trail of memories, fair foot loose and fancy free